Ahead of the 20th National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party slated on October 16th, TVBS commentator Wen Qiyu invited MIT scholar Professor M. Taylor Fravel to share insights on Washington's possible involvement in the cross-strait stalemate. Welcome to TVBS Meeting Room, where we tackle global issues with a view from Taiwan. I'm your host, Wen Qiyu. Today, we're pleased to have one of the most prominent Chinese military experts, Professor M. Taylor Fravel from MIT. As the world is increasingly alarmed by the possibility of a Taiwan Strait conflict, potentially involving the two most powerful nations, United States and China, and Taiwan. In his interview with 60 Minutes on Sunday, when asked to clarify if he meant that, unlike Ukraine, U.S. forces, men and women, would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion. Biden replied, yes. This is the fourth time President Biden said the U.S. will defend Taiwan. However, each time the White House walked back by saying the U.S. policy toward Taiwan, meaning strategic ambiguity, hasn't changed. As you know, this is the fourth time that the president uh, in a TV interview has made sort of a very clear cut commitment to Taiwan that doesn't that isn't consistent with uh, declaratory U.S. policy, uh, which is why the White House uh, routinely and almost now immediately right, will issue a statement saying that the policy has not changed. Even if the president is reflecting what might be his personal view, uh, given the authority of the president in the U.S. system, his personal views are often very hard to distinguish from policy. Uh, but if he had pursued a change in policy, then we would probably expect to see um, significant changes coming out of the State Department, the Defense Department, the White House, and other government agencies, which we haven't seen. And so that makes me think uh, he is sort of reflecting what his kind of personal view or belief is uh, in a way that is uh, not necessarily fully aligned with U.S. policy, but that U.S. policy uh, itself has uh, not yet changed. But it's a very confusing situation. Um, and and, and I, I, I suspect individuals in Taiwan are confused. I suspect individuals in China are confused. And that itself is worrying uh, to some degree because it means that people may uh, misunderstand uh, what U.S. policy is or may miscalculate as a result. The fourth Taiwan Strait crisis during uh, U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan put the world on edge. It was also the first time we saw Chinese military encircling Taiwan on full display. Were you worried at that time? Sure, I, I was very worried. Um, I think for three reasons. Um, the first, uh, clearly, right, Taiwan is the most important uh, objective or, or goal in China's military strategy and has been since the end of the Cold War, if not longer, right? But I mean, it's really significant how the PLA has transformed itself. It's much, it was much, much more capable than the last time there was a crisis, which of course raised the question, what might they do? And then uh, the third reason why I was worried is when uh, those uh, military exercise zones or closure zones were announced, they were, they were much more extensive. Uh, than in the last uh, crisis. Uh, they were much closer to Taiwan. Did the U.S. military learn something from what was shown in terms of military forces during that time? I have no doubt that the U.S. watched every moment of that and other allied countries very, very closely. Taiwan, I'm sure, was watching it uh, very closely, too, to learn as much as they can. And the second question though, is whether or not this was an actual rehearsal. Clearly, they were demonstrating, I think, at a very high level, an intent uh, to carry out a blockade uh, by, by having these closure zones and exercises very close to the ports in the north and the south of Taiwan. But at the same time, some of the elements of the exercises really weren't ones one would use in an actual conflict. Perhaps the most important part was less about the platforms and more about uh, the ability of the Eastern Theater Command, which has responsibility for Taiwan, to command and control a large and complex operation. Ukraine and Russia war. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this is prompting another major military strategy change in China? There isn't a new objective for Chinese military strategy. I believe it remains Taiwan and coping with uh, U.S. Uh, intervention. If uh, the U.S. does uh, intervene uh, militarily in a war across the Taiwan Strait, and that hasn't changed. But the war in Ukraine, I don't think, is one of these wars in the international system in the book that I talk about that ought to necessarily prompt China to think about war fighting in a new way. And do you think the U.S. has adequate understanding of China's military 
um, do you I think we have the right capabilities? So I think uh, overall, the United States has a pretty good understanding of the People's Liberation Army. The war in Ukraine does have an interesting lesson, which is the sort of how well our or how, how well a country's national sort of estimates are um, compared to what the reality is. Now, the question is whether or not you know, the U.S. is adequately prepared. Or we don't know if China sees the same window or not, um, right? Do they actually see um, the U.S. becoming much more capable after 2027 and thus having extra sort of incentives to take action now? Or uh, alternatively, are they looking at the war in Ukraine and saying perhaps uh, we aren't nearly as ready as we thought we were? I think We'll have, we'll just have to see how, how how the situation unfolds, but but at the same time, I do wonder a little bit whether or not deterrence has in fact been strengthened by the war in Ukraine. Well, the last question is, um, and I can kind of guess your answer, but I still have to ask: uh, Will China invade Taiwan? I don't think China wants to invade. Right, invasion would be the last resort to reunify. Um, um, <clears throat> I mean, that's their goal, or, or that's their goal as they see it. Their preferred means of achieving this you know, outcome is not uh, through an invasion, right? They, they still pursue a policy of peaceful unification. I still think that for China, because of the very high risks of a major war and the cost, um, invasion right is not, not something that they're eager to do. And so whether or not China decides to invade, I think will be more a function of how the politics uh, over unification or reunification unfold. Uh, which includes um, you know, decisions taken not just uh, in China, but in uh, Washington and in Taiwan as well. There is no uh, specific timeline. There's no one year. Uh, when 2027 comes up, 